We turn now to the 2024 election that ends a week from today. Early voting is underway right now, both in person and by mail. And joining us is the Pasco County Supervisor of Elections, Brian Corley. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for, for being with us. I know it's a busy time for you, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to our audience about the uh, the election. So people are able to vote right now. Remind us about the different ways, the different options people have to vote. Well, you know, in Florida, we have you have options. Of course, you have your Election Day polling place, which, of course, is going to be November 5th. We you have early voting that's going on uh, in Pasco, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. We started the 21st. Uh, we will go through uh, this coming Saturday, November 2nd. Vote by mail has come and gone. Uh, that deadline has passed. But you, at this point, you have early voting or Election Day in-person voting. And you say the uh, the deadline for mail vo voting has passed. You're talking about the, the deadline to request a mail ballot, but you can still return your mail ballot if you have one. Absolutely. Great point. Yeah, we still have a lot of outstanding uh, vote by mail ballots. You can return those either, of course, USPS, although I tell people, I would say today, uh, give about a week uh, because of the because of the volume. You can always return it to one of our uh, our secure ballot intake stations at our early voting sites, any one of our thirteen, or of course deliver it to our office. But it's very important under Florida law; it has to be back to our office no no later than or by seven p.m. on election day. So to emphasize that point, if you're thinking about dropping your mail ballot in the in the mail. Uh, later this week or the weekend or even next Tuesday, it, it's very likely it won't get to you in time to be counted. So uh, in that case, you would drop it off at your office, the supervisor of elections in whatever county you live in, you drop it off in person at their office? That is correct. Yes, sir. So what can you tell us about crowds in Pasco County at the early in-person voting sites? I'm pleased to report that, and, and I can only speak for Pasco, but I've talked to some other colleagues as well. Democracy is alive and well, and, and I'm, I, I'm personally um, amazed at I've been I've been saying somewhat tongue in cheek. Civility is back, and what I mean by that is every election has its own vibe. And um, I think back to a few cycles ago where voters were more friendly than they than they had been, say in 2016 and 20. And, uh, and I've been out and about at early voting sites, inter interacting with voters and assisting. And people are, you know, regardless of political identification or, or gender or race, people are seem more jovial. They're doing their civic duty and they're not as um, the palatable. It's palatable how uh, voters are seem more friendly than they had in the past. And, and that's 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 very refreshing to see. And I'm very pleased to report that. And oftentimes we see pictures or we experience the long lines on Election Day. But I think in general, what we're learning is that if you want to kind of quick and, and not having not as long lines, you can go during early voting because it's spread out so much longer that oftentimes you'll be able to vote pretty much right away during early voting. Is that what you've been seeing in Pasco County? Uh, yeah, we're seeing, I mean, there's obviously some some of, uh, wait time because the problem we have is it's a multi-page ballot. There, there, there are six amendments on there and literally forcing in our, our county and most counties two physical pieces of paper. So what I tell voters we sent your sample ballot, and if whatever region don't have one, you can go on our website or any SOE website. It's very important. Do your research. Be prepared, because if you if you have your sample ballot, in fact, we love when voters come in with their sample ballots because they're prepared, and it's going to expedite the process. So it'll save them time and other voters time as well. That's I can't stress that enough. But there are rules for what you can and can't be having inside of a polling location. I'm pretty sure you can't take pictures inside and... Uh, there are probably some uh, some uh, restrictions on signage and what you might even be wearing inside. What what can you tell us about that? Yeah. So first and foremost, uh, yeah, no photography is allowed. I was at an early voting site over the weekend, and and I felt kind of bad. It was a first time voter, which we make a big deal about. Uh, but mom or dad had wanted to take her photo, and I had to politely interject and say, "Can we do that outside? Because that's not lawful." The only exception is a ballot selfie. A lot of voters will say, "How do I know who I voted for?" You can legally take a, literally a picture of your ballot uh, if you want to. That's certainly your right to. As far as what you can wear, there's there's so much misinformation, disinformation online. We're, other states, we literally cannot wear anything as a voter. Obviously, our election workers are nonpartisan. They're not going to wear anything political. But in Florida, you can wear anything that's on the person. You can wear your political T-shirt or ball cap or whatever if you're there to vote. Once you're finished voting, then you have to go outside past the no solicitation zone 
which is 150 feet from the entrance to the polling place. So you can wear wear your political stuff proudly. That's what it's all about. But know that you once you vote, you have to go outside, obviously. Are there changes to voting because of the recent hurricanes? There are. And, uh, you know, uh, Governor DeSantis signed uh, an executive order for Hurricane Helene and then another one for Hurricane Milton, uh, allowing us to to um, to uh, commingle polling places. For example, I know my colleague in Bay Area, we, 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 we lost some polling places because of the hurricane. So uh, we're able to waive the notice requirements uh, of, of within 30 days of an election. So we're able to pivot to an alternate polling site, for example, um, so, the, yeah, things like that, we're able to waive some of the training. Our poll workers, our election workers, receive training for the March PPP as well as the August primary. So they're trained. Uh, the law says you have to do training every election. So the governor, and we much appreciate that order because it'll waive that. It's it, it assisting us in kind of pulling off an election during a stressful time post-hurricane. You mentioned poll workers in a lot of areas of the country. We've heard about these stories about poll workers being harassed by people. Um, what What's your experience of that in Pasco County? And uh, how are you training your poll workers to handle that and, and maybe even training law enforcement to handle that? Yeah, we've all, it's nothing new for us. We've always partnered with law enforcement. Uh, they, they are, they have our back without going into detail and to make sure that we have a safe and secure voting environment with access for all voters and the safety of our election workers. There is a special place in heaven for our election workers. Uh, I was concerned going into the cycle about losing poll workers and we didn't, but I will tell you this, um, this we're being bombarded with, with, with disinformation. I get calls and emails most every day. And it's fascinating to me because voters are reaching out to things that are allegedly happening in other states. I'll give me an example. I've gotten several phone calls and emails um, relaying about allegedly vote flipping machines in Georgia. This has got to stop. It's it's it, it, who, people who are perpetrating these lies are doing the bidding of our foreign adversaries and those that are putting misinformation. These are our, our fellow Americans, our elected officials who are either respectfully ignorant or lying. And I, I say that not to be sarcastic or condescending. It has to stop. It turns out in Georgia, for example, one voter made a mistake and asked for uh, a, an alternate ballot to, to, to rectify it. Perfectly legal. The voter was happy, and suddenly it became vote flipping. I was at, as I mentioned, I was at early voting sites over the weekend, and I saw not once, not twice, but three times in our county where voters said, one voter turned to me and said, I made a mistake, what do I do? Guess what we did? We spoiled that ballot, we got the voter a new one, all is well. But this torrent of misinformation is literally doing the bidding of those that want to polarize Americans and erode voter confidence, and we're letting them win. And it, it it pains me to see our thousands of election workers giving blood, sweat, and tears just to try and go against the tide of of those that are trying to divide us. And I, I'm over it as an American, and I hope others will join me in that sentiment. Our guest is Pasco County Supervisor of Elections Brian Corley. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're broadcasting live on October 29th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And Brian, on that note. Um, I, I saw this this morning on Twitter. It was posted last night by a local member of Congress, and it's a short video that I'm going to play the audio for and uh, ask for your comment. It has to do with voter suppression uh, accusations. Um, a local member of Congress, Anna Paulina Luna, is calling this a massive coordinated voter suppression effort. And so if she's right, I want I think our audience should know about it. And if she's wrong, they should know that as well. So here's what Anna Paulina Luna posted last night on Twitter. We just uncovered a massive coordinated voter suppression effort, not just here in Florida, but also in Pennsylvania and in Michigan that's being coordinated and funded by this dark money left leaning super PAC. Uh, the point is, is that what they're doing is they're dropping these mailers, not just here in Florida, but also Michigan, Pennsylvania, on Republican incumbents and also Republican candidates in office in an effort to suppress the Republican electorate that has not voted yet. Remember, it's important that you vote early and that you vote in person because it allows you to micro it allows the GOP to micro target the rest of the Republican voters that have not shown up and also to ballot chase. But the reason why they're trying to do this is because they know that President Trump is going to win. OK, he's surging in the polling. And with your help and your early vote, he is going to be the next president. We are now seven days out, but they are trying to do this because they understand the fight is going to be control of the House of Representatives and also Senate. So they are lying. See this, identify it, throw them out, and tell your friends it's voter suppression. 
That's Congress member Anna Paulina Luna speaking on Twitter last night. Uh, she calls it a massive coordinated voter suppression effort. During the video, she flashed up some uh, pictures of of these flyers. And from what I could tell, it was from the Center for Voter Information. The flyers said, keeping manufacturing jobs in America, defending America from cyber terrorism, supporting small business program. I, I don't know what this is, but if there's a massive coordinated voter suppression effort like Anna Paulina Luna is suggesting, we should know about it. What do you know, Brian Corley? I, I will say this. I, I, in one regard, the congresswoman is right with regards to this organization, the Center for Voter Information. I've been battling this group, my colleagues and I, for probably 10 plus years. They are infamous for inaccurate mailings. Voter registrations in the past that went to people that were deceased that never lived in Florida nine-year-old children, for example, their, their accuracy is horrible. I can speak to that. I can't speak to the political angle, but I, I did notice the Congresswoman alluded to in-person voting only. And, and I will tell you this, we did see a marked decrease in vote by mail utilization. It, it has become, uh, quite honestly, hijacked by politics. What I mean by that is Florida, as I mentioned, one of the, one of the three ways to vote, vote by mail, it is safe, it is secure, and we had advocated for it to save time and also to avoid lines at the polls. And um, let me quickly make the case. I think a lot of uh, politicians confuse what Florida does with other states with, with vote by mail or, or absentees. In Florida, we don't mail it out to just anybody. By law, you have to request it. It's always been that way under, under the law. Other states like Utah, Colorado, Oregon, et cetera, they mail it out to every registered voter. I don't like that because it's a huge waste of taxpayer resources. But in Florida, you have to request it. When you request it, we're going to validate who you are based on the PII you provide, last four, social, DL number, et cetera. We, when we mail a vote-by-mail ballot to you, it's not affordable. If you've not updated your address with us, it comes back to our office. Every signature is checked, and if it does not match, we're all given ha uh, handwriting training by the Department of State. If it doesn't match, we have to reach out to you, the voter, and you're going to have to submit additional affidavit and, and ID to make sure that ballot counts. Um, every day, by law, we have to report to Tallahassee who are the new requests for vote by mail and who's returned it? Who has access to that under the law? The political parties and the, and the campaigns. So they can see in real time. In fact, I'll, I joke with voters, if you get tired of political mailings and flyers and text messages and you want it to stop, return your vote by mail ballot. So I, I, I would I would respectfully disagree with the only in-person angle. Um, you know, voters have options in Florida and we are, as Governor DeSantis said, and I agree wholeheartedly, we are the gold standard. And I've had you longer than I promised, but I do have, uh, I would, if you don't mind, can you tell us about the ride to the polls in Pasco County on Election Day? Yeah, in fact, uh, President Reagan once said the eight most feared words in the English language. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Not in Pasco. We have partnered with our, the Board of County Commissioners and their public uh, transit to offer free rides to the polls. So if it's Election Day um, and you, or even early voting as well, if you need to get to the polls and you show your, your vote information card, you don't pay a fare that day. It's a great, great resource. We've done this for about a decade now, and it's very, very well received by, by the voters who utilize it. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on Tuesday Cafe, Brian. Thank you very much. Brian Corley is the Pasco County Supervisor of Elections. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan.